This is Dr. Ruben Chen, and welcome to the Vital Signs Podcast. Hi, uh, welcome to another Vital Signs Podcast. I'm here with my lovely wife, and uh, we have a fun topic today. I think I thought it was more appropriate for her to be here with us because this is about um, decluttering things around the house, and I'm sort of the clutter magnet. So uh, before we get started, I want to do a shout out to our obviously huge sponsor, which is Sunrider International. Uh, Sunrider has some of the best uh, herbal health food uh, supplements on the market. One of the ones that I super love is this product right here, Top Focus. If you have never tried Top Focus before, um, take one or two capsules and it is, um, and it, all of a sudden your mind starts to think clearer. Uh, you're, you feel actually better. It is loaded with uh, different kinds of amino acids and minerals and herbs, including um, alpha, um, alpha, GP, L, alpha GPC. Um, it's got tyrosine. It's also got uh, something, uh, club moss extract. So that is super awesome and helps with memory. So it's a great product. Anyways, uh, this is an awesome product. If you haven't tried it, you can check it out. Uh, if you go to our website, vitalsciencepodcast.com, you can click in the upper right-hand corner, Sunrider Products. You can check it out there. You can also go to uh, sunrider.com for this product and for more information, or you can talk with your local independent business owner for more details about these Sunrider products and other things, including the opportunities and Sunrider. And so that's one product that you actually I, use a lot. I use this tons. I just took it like a couple, uh, about 30 minutes ago, just because we were doing this podcast so you can stay mentally sharp and ready to go. And it lasts for like uh, four or five hours. Uh, so if you really need to be sharp, and ready to go, and um, this is this is definitely the product I recommend. Yeah, and our kids. I mean, that's the great thing is that kids can use it too. Yeah, and our kids ask for it sometimes. You know, when they're feeling a little stressed about tests coming up, or when they're just feeling anyway, when whenever they feel like they need it. Um, if they're worrying or if their mind is too cluttered. That's one thing that we're going to talk about today. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Let's talk about what, it, what I am glad that Ruben had me on because he, so this is a time of spring cleaning. Yeah. Maybe some of you have been cleaning all year as, uh, as you've had more time at home. For us, we've had a bunch of kids at home. So now that our kids are actually finally back in school, some of them at least, um, after the last year, I'm like, I can finally get my spring cleaning done from last year. Yeah. So we're we're getting a lot of uh, decluttering done, and um, you know, this isn't uh, this actually isn't something that we do a lot. Um, I declutter. Yeah, I I'm a. I feel like I'm always doing it. But <laughs> I know it's. I'm the, constantly, especially as the kids grow out of things. But uh, maybe he's not doing it. I'm so a. Much. I am a pack rat, so I keep things forever because I feel like there's always going to be a time that I'm going to need it. So I have boxes full of old wires <laughs> from like CD okay. yeah, CD so, players so you're and stuff about like this. that. So this is a goal of yours. Yes, to work this on is a total two. goal of mine. Because so, um, you know, I was. Uh, I read a lot of books about this stuff to kind of help motivate me because I am also, I'm, I'm one of those people and you probably are too, a visual person. Now you look around and when you see um, organization, happiness, cleanliness, it relaxes your mind and you feel happier. Yeah. Now the problem is a lot of people still, a lot of people are visual like that. They, they feel the impact of their environment, but they don't always change things around them they they might they may feel it but they don't know um why they feel that way yeah or they don't um or they may attribute it to something else but what they don't realize is if your environment is cleaner you just feel happier yeah um there's definitely actually there are studies to show that um emotional levels uh, are are better for people who maintain who do something as simple as as make their bed. Is that crazy? So making your bed and cleaning your room 
can actually decrease stress and make you into a happier person. And there is actually studies that show these type of things, which is so funny. So cleaning a room is, is powerful. And, um, but what Ruben was saying was interesting. So he's saying that he feels like um, if he throws something away, that, oh, that's something that he may need, right? Yeah. And so, but, and I have found that as I've been doing a lot of, um, of this decluttering, that's, you know, at least, you know, oh, way overdue, especially from last year, since we never really got to it with uh, so many kids at home, uh, um, that it's actually very emotional to go through your old things and see your life um, as you were, you know, I remember when the skirt was in style, right? And now it's not. <laughs> and it's easier to throw away if you know, if you feel like that. But it's also a little bit emotional to know, think about the times you wore something or uh, but when you do get rid of something that you um, that you can that you know, you don't need, um, it puts that strain off you because I think I think if you have this feeling, oh, I might need that someday, that that's sort of a negative response. It's sort of um, feeling like um, the universe isn't going to take care of you. Yeah. And now I think for some of us, we went through some of the worst of it with the pandemic. And as long as you had enough toilet paper and food. You seem to be okay. Yeah, I'm kind of like, well, oh, the well, this is this is it's not the worst it could be. It could be much worse for sure for many people. For some people, it was devastating. But I'm like, well, um, I didn't need as much as I thought I would. I mean, for sure, I've been only wearing the same like 10 yoga type outfits for <laughs> for the last year. So I'm like, oh, I really don't need all these clothes, right? So um, I think it's very freeing to get rid of that. But it not to say it's not emotional. Yeah. Because there's there's some sense of nostalgia or a sense of um, missing out. Um, you know, say you have something and you haven't used it in your perception to its uh, utmost potential. Um, if you feel like, oh, well, maybe in the future, I'll be able to still use it. But in reality, you never, never, ever touch it. Uh, yeah, this, I mean, I actually, I love reading books, but I listen to most of them because I, I mean, because we kind of have a busy life. So when I sit down to read, I just fall asleep. So having a lot of books around saying, oh, I'm going to read that someday, just push, puts a lot of strain and pressure on you. Yeah. So obviously you don't want to get rid of everything in your life that you haven't finished, but it is it, it is freeing to get rid of some of it to open up your mind to who you are at that moment. Yeah. And, and this is one of the things that I've been trying to do, or this is, this is my goal, is as we are cleaning out or decluttering to actually separate the things that I want to keep and not necessarily look at the things that I want to get rid of. Uh, yes. Uh, I have a friend who helped me, <laughs> who helps me declutter. And you know, when you get rid of something that you think, oh, this is still good, or I still sort of like this, or maybe I'll wear it someday, but does it, there's lots of things. Does it bring you joy? Or maybe it's still great, but I, I no longer, I, I don't choose that. So one thing I realized is that there are a lot of my outfits that are perfectly fine. I just don't choose because they're not comfy enough. Or, um, I mean, I don't work in that type of environment where I would need to wear that. And might as well free myself from that. So yeah. So I I have a lot. I mean, my closet and our where we store stuff is just full of stuff that So why are you doing this podcast if you're not I'm work I'm working on it. This is I such think, a hard I think, thing. I think it's for a lot of people it me. is it is something that I, um, takes it actually takes constant effort. And if you know somebody who's super organized, they actually do this automatically. Mm -hmm. Um they like for us, like our kids outgrow things. And instead of putting whatever they're outgrowing back, I mean, they have a separate pile, or they have a separate place, they have a, a method to get rid of the things that they don't need right away. So they're constantly getting rid of things. And hopefully they don't have to go through what, you know, those shows, 
the hoarder. Oh, like a hoarder, yeah. That hoarder type show goes through. I'm not through. to the point of, of being a no, hoarder. No, you're, you're definitely not. In fact, <laughs> you don't, I mean, he talks about the stuff, but he doesn't. I, you know, I, other than DVDs I, and sports equipment. Yeah, I'm pretty minimalist by, by nature, but I just like, also I feel bad about getting rid of things that I, and just like Kitty was saying, that seem to be in perfectly good order, right? They, they still works, but why do I have it when I never actually use it and it's taking up space? Not just uh, physical space out there, but there's some emotional space and there's that thing in your mind Maybe eventually I need to use it, but in reality, I'm never going to. And then you feel guilty that you never did. Yeah. So um, decluttering, I mean, it frees up your mind, but it's, it, it is a, it's very emotional sometimes. Um, and so if we're talking, I mean, you can read plenty of books about how to declutter. Have you worn it in a year? You know, have you? Does it bring you joy? Um, different organizational tips, and they all work for sure. And I encourage you to, you know, read some books. If I, Do you I have agree. any recommended ones? Well, um, the magic, what's it called? The Magic of Tidying Up, that one. Um, <laughs> we did that book. Um, that's the little Japanese. Um, Marie book Kondo? By, yeah, the Kondo method. Right. Mon Kondo method. So, um, yes, we did that in book club in our book club um, several years ago. And it was the most um, well-attended book club and with some of the best discussion uh, because just this is something that we deal with personally, I guess, um, as you get older and have your own house and whatnot or your own space. But uh, it's very interesting to hear other people's methods, other people's perceptions. And I have a lot of friends who are very minimalist. I try to learn from them. <laughs> And, um, and I sometimes, this is my best method. I think about, you know, a fashionable friend or a minimalist friend. I'm like, would they keep that outfit? <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, because I feel like I can't always trust myself. I'm like, well, uh, Katie might keep it, but would they keep it? Um, but as you're going through this, um, I mentioned the emotional because this is clutter in your mind too. I have books from, <laughs> from college thinking, oh, maybe I'll go scan that book. I'd like to reread it. Um, I want to retain that knowledge as your memory starts. Uh, so you don't use it, your memory starts failing, but that puts pressure on yourself. Um, and the clutter in your mind, you're thinking so many things all at once. I think Ruben actually is able to help. Ruben does a lot of meditation. And if um, I, I'm part of like several groups that talk about meditation. And the number one complaint is I can't get my mind to, to just settle. I can't just think about the breathing. I'm, I'm always, my mind is always drifting off into other places. So I, I just wanted to ask you. How to declutter your mind? How do you, de I mean, are you able to just concentrate in meditation now that, I mean, he's been doing like ha at least half an hour a day yeah. for since I was in medical school. Yeah. So it's so, been a while. Um, yeah. So for me, your, mi your mind still goes off in those places. Yeah. For, it is. Yeah. Even, even if, I mean, not that you're the greatest meditation master ever. Sorry. Totally not. <laughs> but I mean, but you are well practiced. Yeah. So one of the ways to help declutter your mind, uh, I think part of it is when you, when you do it. If you're thinking about meditation as a thing that you do often, I've heard this from many people, and my experience has been the same, is when you do your meditation to help declutter yourself, either first thing in the morning, like right when you get up, which can be tough because you may fall directly back asleep, or yeah, I'm actually very amazed that you don't fall back asleep, especially or, when it's for something in the morning. <laughs> well, I also, the, one of the ways that I do my meditation is I have to sit straight up and not touch anything. So, and what I mean is like sit straight up, like my back is in, if my back is leaning on something, I'll have a tendency to sort of fall asleep. So I have to maintain a certain posture for the entire time and also focus. So, um, but for me, it's either right before I get up or right after I get up or right before I go to bed. And those are the best times because your mind right before you go to bed is the time that you want to clear your thoughts and declutter your mind. Especially if you have trouble sleeping, right? Right. Or 
right when you get up, before you start filling your mind with all the stresses of the day, it's a lot easier to just sort of sit up, um, sit in a chair. I have a chair that I just sit in every single time I do it. And I, and I sit and I have to keep my back straight and make sure my head isn't leaning on something. If I'm leaning on something, I end up getting too comfortable and then I start feeling like I'm going to sleep. So, so posture helps. Um, what do you think about? Do you think about your breathing? How does it, how are you able to control your thoughts? So initially I started with guided meditations. Which I still do. Yeah. In fact, I'll tell you one line from a meditation I listened to. It says, you are present now. You are not controlled by your thoughts. You can acknowledge them for what they are, simply thoughts. And I think about that a lot because, because you know, when you think about your future, you think about all this anxiety starts building up. All this stuff is coming up. Is our, And it feels dangerous. It feels like something dangerous is happening. It feels, gives you that fight or flight response when what, what are you fighting? Simply thoughts. Anyway, that's, that's one thing that helps me. What about you? Yeah, so that's actually, it's tough for me since just like the stuff that I have around me, sometimes I'm afraid to let go of thoughts because I feel like, oh no, what if I let it go and I don't remember it yes. or I don't have he, it? Then. That is... That's, That's definitely me. something he thinks about. So I struggle with that for sure. Yeah. He's like, I must continue thinking about this thing. So I do not forget, but yeah. what do you do instead? I mean, you I just let it go. Let it go. Or <laughs> and you, that's been, you write actually, it down. You write, I write every everything down too. So I uh, keep um, a meticulous journal. Um, and I also keep a very detailed calendar. So if I ever want to remember something, I've written it, I've written it down in a place so that I will check often. So I, I always check my calendar. It's just, it's nothing special. It's just like Google calendar. And I put everything that I need to do down it's, there. It's very detailed. But... It's super detailed. Uh, but, and if it's not there, then obviously, and if I haven't made the effort to write it down, then I probably don't care that much about it. So when I'm meditating, what I've seen is, is that when I meditate well, and I'm able to let go of those thoughts, that actually the important thoughts eventually come back. Uh, I, and sometimes the problem is, is that I'm too tied emotionally to it. So I'm not thinking about it clearly anyways. So any of the thoughts that come into my mind at that time uh, that I feel like are pressing are probably not well thought out. They're probably not going to be not going to be good decisions. So I need to let everything go. And when I sit and I meditate, I just imagine uh, sitting in darkness and and I almost see my thoughts come before me and then go. I know that sounds so, ridiculous, uh, no, but well, I can no, just see my thoughts like- it's sort of a like visualization, leave. right? Yeah, and then I just um, sort of- In wait. my meditation, they say, think of your thoughts like colored balloons <laughs> floating away. <laughs> I'm like, okay, anyway, that, it, the visualization might sound a little bit cheesy, but it totally works if you're able to- to do it. it now yeah. i don't i don't do um guided meditations anymore i mostly i just set an alarm and and i've learned how to just sort of let things go and i just the whole point is to sit there and think of nothing which is it's so hard it's so hard today it sounds like you're wasting time but i can feel it and actually when i do little meditations breathing exercises and that at as regular as Ruben is at this, but um, one thing I've noticed is you're able to uh, calm yourself in the ways that that you need. Like for me and a lot of people, this happens, right? You like relax your jaw, relax your neck. Yeah. <laughs> so um, if you think about the things that for you, it might be something else, might be something else you tense. A lot of people get stomach aches if you're able to relax that part. Um, but, and it comes from the mind, that clutter in your mind, that, um, those negative thoughts that keep swirling around. Yeah. And anxiety and tension that affects your immune system as well. People get more sick. I mean, if you think about people who live in big cities where things are often cluttering your mind, have the highest issues with heart disease, with allergies, how many of us have random allergies? I have all kinds of weird allergies 
that I had. And as I started to do more meditation, some of those allergies actually improved, not totally gone, but they are much under much yeah, better Yeah, it's control. actually a pretty amazing. I wish you could have done some before and after pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I know, because I have, I have a really bad eczema and I started to meditate and that eczema has almost been completely gone. But um, and I, not, not that this is a cure-all or anything, but it just shows that um, how much anxiety affects your body. And what, you know, it, in the past, it, you know, maybe not even in the past, and I make it sound like it's like in the twenties or something, but even when I was young, when we didn't have cell phones and we were asked to just sort of sit in a room by ourselves, you can entertain yourself with thoughts or doing things. Yeah. Waiting rooms. I know I as know. a kid, I remember sitting a lot <laughs> yeah. because we, um, we lived in the country. And so to drive to town, we just sat there. You sat there, you don't listen to music, you may just yeah. sort of sit there like hmm, with yourself. Yeah, I had two hours of bus rides every day in middle school and um, part of high school. Two hours of bus rides before I had a disc man, definitely before MP3 players. Um, I, and I couldn't do homework because I got sick. So it really just sat there. It's amazing. And not that that's good or bad, but, but no, I mean, a lot more time to just be there with your thoughts yeah. and hopefully not in a negative environment. But but now we have access to, I mean, I don't, I can't even imagine a regular person wanting to sit in one place without access to their phone or the internet for more than a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's true. Yeah. But, um, and so to kind of conclude, um, well, I just wanted to say one more thing about like the actual physical decluttering. So I'm decluttering um, some old papers and nostalgia, nostalgic things. And it's very interesting because I'm looking at the person I was. And I'll tell you what, it's great because I can just take a picture. <laughs> and that's what you're oh, yeah, talking about. Right. You're talking about cell phones. They bring a lot of um, stress, Stress, but a lot so of convenient. I'm yeah. like, I love this thing. I'll just take a picture and now I have it forever, right? Yeah. Stored in my Google photos and on my phone. Um, <laughs> so I love that. But um, so interesting to look at the past, the people we were. And it's hard because I think we have in our mind a little bit, this person that we used to be in our mind and what defines us. And maybe we've moved on or maybe we haven't. Maybe that's still in our mind. Oh, I'm this type of person. And maybe that is um, weighing you down. Now, Ruben, you work in a pain clinic. Yeah. And it's sometimes people are defined by their... It, we we want to feel like we are defined by our successes, but a lot of people feel like they're defined by their failures or their pain. Uh, yeah, and, because those failures and that shame, especially the most, I don't know, toxic, I would say, of emotions, Yeah, it, it doesn't go away easily. Yeah. And to be able to cut yourself off from that past shame uh, or pain is difficult. And I and I see it when I, I see people come into my clinic, um, since I see mostly pain, and pain is a subjective thing and it's heavily influenced by your emotions. And some people have chronic pain forever, and they and then they start saying that, oh, I am a chronic pain person, or I am a I have this pain or this this ailment, and that becomes them almost like I am I'm I'm 5'11 or I'm Chinese or something like that. It, it becomes their identity. And to release that pain almost is like releasing a part of their actual identity. And it's super tough. I've seen people who have been in pain and it's tough to let it go. So, yeah. Um, and for, I mean, obviously that pain is real, Yeah. but I mean, other people are defined by other things, their failures, um, their successes, and they've moved on. Um, so it's not, so I would say it's tough to let, I mean, just like, I guess we're going all back. Sometimes you just need to let go of the things that have held you back and keep the things that are helping motivate you forward. And that's the same thing with decluttering your mind decluttering your house and just decluttering your pain is let go of the things 
that are weighing you down and let yourself move forward. Right. Uh, that's great. <laughs> um, now we just got to do it. And that's yeah. the tough part. I mean, this could take a lot of, a it's lot not of time. an overnight just, thing. Yeah. It's definitely and I mean, a process. Um, a good place to start is decluttering your house <laughs> or clean your we're, room. We're working on. Yeah. Clean your room. If the, your house is a mess, start. And that's start that, the, the, the easiest thing to get to. Right? Yeah. Start with there. Mm -hmm. That will help you visually. That will help you, um, mentally and, uh, good luck if you're doing any spring cleaning. Um, yeah. Tell us any thoughts that you have. Yeah about if you, you have can, any tips about organization or something that's really helped you to get um, rid of this pain to get rid of or to get rid of something physical like um, something that no longer brings you joy but you feel guilty getting rid of mm -hmm. yeah share any comments below and if you like this video again or uh, this podcast uh, please share it with your friends it super helps us out Thank you for your time. Thank you to my wife uh, to help out talking about decluttering. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.